welcome, and uh, I'm pleased to be joined today by two members of the band Slaves to Humanity. We have Shane and Nathan here with us. Um, so tell us, guys, uh, of course, I know your previous material, all good stuff, and you've Thank got you. a new single, Bully, coming out here on the 24th of this month, February. Can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, so Bully is a, a song that we've we've been working with Trev Lukather um, to write and to produce, and um, we're super excited to be having it come out. We're playing a show on the 24th of February at okay. the House of Blues in Anaheim. Um, that's going to be like a release party for that show. Very cool. Um, so this is the first of of a set of songs that we're hoping to release that are going to be um, a little bit of a change in what we've done so far. Okay. Where we're trying to blend some more um, elements that we haven't blended into the music before. Um you know, some different sounds, some stuff that has almost more of a modern edge to it while still keeping that driving hard rock feel that we've been trying to curate. Right. Because so yeah. I've heard, I mean, obviously you've described your sound in the past as sunset grunge and kind of inspired by the mm -hmm. 90s. Um, and that's interesting. I did not know that you were working with Trev Lukather. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I interviewed him a couple of years ago when he had a ZFG project going on. Hmm. Yeah, and good guy. Really good guy. Yeah, we, we love him. We've, we've become very yeah. good friends. And he's a talented guy. I mean, Very, no doubt about it. A um, little bit of his dad's uh, mojo rubbed off on him, obviously. Mm -hmm. The uh, so when you guys were say you're you know you're younger guys coming from me, an old man, um, inspired by the '90s. What bands specifically were you drawn to, or what sounds of that era? Uh, so our old material, everything that's out on Spotify right now, uh, was kind of inspired by bands such as like uh pearl jam audio slave soundgarden mm -hmm. because that was just the one thing that us as musicians we all kind of had that in common sure so because we grew up listening to that kind of stuff so that those were the main bands that we kind of like to mix the sounds from yeah and that, that's a good choice uh were you into alice in chains at all oh yeah 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 there was a me I grew up, well, I went to high school in the 80s, so I was more into that 80s rock scene, but when the 90s carried over, there was a lot of good stuff in the 90s, but the the Soundgarden and those guys you mentioned were really some of the ones that kind of bridged the gap and, and cut away some of the, for lack of a better word, the, the cheesiness and kind of kept the musical integrity intact, but you carried it forward into a newer sound. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely groundbreaking bands. Um, but yeah, I've noticed that. And what I'd be curious to know is from hearing your older stuff, you've got really good and polished on the instruments. Are you guys like amping, you know, putting mics in front of amps? Are you doing it digitally? What exactly is your process? Yeah, well, we've done that in the past. Um, for everything that's out on Spotify now, we've done a lot of reamping where we've um, run like, you know, the bass through some Ampeg stuff and um, some different uh, custom um, were they were they Marshall cab Shane that we used for the, for some of those guitars? I'm not sure. I'm sure some of them were. Yeah, I think I remember um, some custom uh, heads being used for that too. Um, so yeah, definitely reamping to get a lot of that um, grunge kind of sound over those guitar and 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 bass tracks. Um, I don't think we did any uh, particular reamping on Bully though, did we? No, I don't. I don't believe so. Yeah, Trev has a really impressive way of getting a certain sound out of even just like digitally simulated amps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's that's how we did the most recent track. I mean, I've I have this conversation a lot. the The, the digital amp simulators and stuff are getting so good that mm -hmm. there's a lot of guys who've been around for forty years. They're still like, well, "This is pretty damn good," and I'm not to lug around a tube amp to a show and that, and even for especially for recording, it's just so yeah. much easier in the the infinite presets and you can adjust everything. It's, it's really, it's getting harder and harder to deny the, uh, the viability of it. Yeah. Well, certainly things are getting smaller. I mean, I've, I mm. only for a very short while did I carry around an, an almost six foot stack of uh, an Ernie Ball music man bass stack. And that was, that was just so impractical, like, especially the venues we play at where, you know, <laughs> a few years ago we were playing a lot of like, you know, bars and places like that, where we kind of had to drag all of our gear, you know, around the tables. Um, and in those kind of environments, I couldn't be, you know, wheeling in my giant case of this six foot amp stack. Um, so I, I've switched over to a, a Fender Rumble. Okay. And it's got, it's great. It's got a DI out on the back. Um, 
it's super, um, you know, all the controls on it are really easy to dial in and I've always gotten a really good sound out of it. So it's, you know, moving to solid state as, as a minimum is, is what I've done. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of bases are you using? So I've been using a, uh, an Ovation Magnum base okay. uh, for the better part of three years now. Um, so we're, we're working with Ernie Ball to get some instruments right now. So we're going to be switching over to some Ernie Ball instruments. Um, but that Ovation Magnum has a special place in my heart as being sure. you know, the instrument that I toured with, especially or played with, especially when we were starting out. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things. I mean, sometimes you have, you can have quote unquote, nicer instruments and you mm -hmm. still have one that you gravitate towards just because the way it feels, whatever. And I guess that could be the same for, I've never played drums or anything, but I'm sure it's gotta be the same. Yeah. 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 I mean, get the, the really fancy, you know, new snare heads and, and whatever and you're just like oh i like the way these floor toms sounded better in my old kit or whatever what have you yeah 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 I get that yeah um one thing i really liked i i don't remember how old it was five or six months old you guys did a video uh where you challenge yourselves to sit in a room and just come up <laughs> with some kind of little mix with no instruments involved yeah um one thing i really liked about that was it almost didn't matter. It, the The ending clip was was a cool little snippet of music, but it, that was almost immaterial. The The cool part was you guys were sitting in a room and and set yourselves these you know confinements of we can't use any instruments. We got to come up with samples just off your phone and and record a piece of music. And I thought that was a really cool way to demonstrate the outside of the box thinking you guys have. Um, oh. Thank you. And especially in this age of digital stuff where you can just, I can do any sound I want and add this much reverb, this much echo. I can do this. I can change the tuning, but you're like, no, let's, let's knock this, you know, let's thump on this, thump on this uh, Tupperware thing and close this door and get some samples. That was really cool thinking. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any idea of if you'll ever use any kind of a uh, found sounds like that in recorded projects? I'm sure if we find something cool, we might just throw it in. I don't see why not. Yeah. Yeah, because I think a lot of people might do fun. that. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I was just saying I had some internet issues. Should oh, be okay now. It happens. But yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people might do that. Um, Like, oh, this would be a neat sound to throw in. But you guys, like, we're going to do yeah. solely that for music. It was a cool idea. Um, So how did the... The recent shows you had in Washington State, um, those mm -hmm. went well? Yeah, they actually all went well. Uh, not that many people came to them, but we still had a great time. Like, the people that were there really liked us. Right. And it's all, all around fun. And we yeah. toured with a band called Sting, and they, they were the best band we could have picked to tour with. It was great. They were fun. Yeah, that's, I mean everybody in the world's got stories of playing to 10 people in a room. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's yeah. universal. Yeah. It's immaterial. strangely, those were some of, those were some of the most fun shows that we've, I think I've ever played um, just because uh, so many of those definitely. people were people who were walking in, you know, from the street or from just hanging out with their buddies and coming in to listen to some music um, and then just having a great time. Like our, our, uh, what was that? Was that our first show? no, our second um the one with the oh, college guys second show second show oh that was so much fun we were playing to this bar and there's almost nobody there and then all of a sudden like these five or six college guys came just walking in and they were they were completely hammered um but they were just like having they so were. much fun and we were feeding off their energy and we right. were having fun and it just it brought the night up from like a four to a ten awesome. yeah yeah so that was that was i think one of my favorite shows of the tour that was experience when they all started walking in and yeah. just all just went yeah like you said from like a four to a ten it was mm -hmm. it was crazy it's like moshing and just yeah totally getting into it yeah that's 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 so much that's such the fun is just having mm -hmm. not i mean people who came to see you 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 know they came to see you but it's yeah but, uh, but especially when you're out of town from your home base and just got people off the street just finding you know, stumbling upon your music and really digging it that's got to be a great feeling totally Totally. Yeah, totally. Now, as far as Bully goes, is that in is there a full album coming with that? Are you releasing singles at this point? Or what's the game plan? 
so that's right now this is uh this is going to be out as a single mm -hmm. um and we have uh the game plan right now is to do a few more singles um we're we're working on more songs with trev in the future here we have some uh we're trying to line up you know our schedule and things like that so we can um, get some more of these songs recorded because we we find that we work really well together so when we're sitting in the same room we just start making music yeah like, mm -hmm. you know ideas start flying things get recorded um so that the pace of working is is very quick um with us and trev but right now this new sound that we're pursuing we don't have a large enough collection of it to put it out as an album so we're just doing some singles right now until we go back and make it a larger body of work does it feel important to you to have it packaged as an album or is that almost immaterial at this point? Well, I'd say to me, I would love to have it out as an album just so that mm -hmm. people could have the, um, you know, the ability to deep dive and to go into more songs than just the, the few that we're promoting. Um, but I think with the way the industry is set up right now, it's, it really is beneficial for us to do singles right now because we can really make each one a push and then once we have this larger audience deliver them a fuller product mm -hmm. um I, i've heard it described as like bullets in the chamber like every single is a bullet and we don't want to just you know throw it all out there in, in one go um, right. so it's from a business standpoint it's it's the strategy for us that has made the most sense um and also right now you know trying to garner up the the funds as a band to actually get in the studio and record you know 10 plus songs um, it's definitely something expensive and, and, uh, we being a bunch of, you know, college guys just fresh out of high school. Um, we're, we're really just doing what we can with, with what we have until we can do more. Oh yeah. It's, it's the days of ramen and pizza. I know it's mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but I, I agree with that. I think, uh, I, I think it's appealing as a musician to want the, the package of here's my album, like it's almost a sense of accomplishment. Like, look at all this I've gotten done. It's, yeah. it's a collection of, of your vision, but I wonder, yeah, with the way the market is right now, it, it mm -hmm. makes more sense to be like, instead of like the hype of an album and then boom, three months later, that's old news. That's the old stuff. If you've got, you know, if you get songs ready and then just boom, and then two months later, boom, here's another one. And four months later or three weeks later, you know, here's another one. There's constantly a fresh rotation of things for people to be excited about. And I think it's yeah. quite a smart play in this day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's definitely, um, you know, they, they joke that att attention spans have gotten shorter. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I think whether or not that's the case, I think what really is happening is there is so much being produced and thrown at people from every angle that to stay relevant, you have to just be releasing something constantly. Right. You always have to stay on top of it. Um, so for where we are, you know, in our position for us, that singles right now, just every, you know, so often we're going to put out another single, another single, mm -hmm. another single. And then when we have generated that interest, then boom, start throwing out, you know, yeah. albums and things. That makes sense. And you're right. It is, it's hard to keep up with everything. I mean, you can't, it's right. Okay. No, but you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's music listening is, is so fractured these days. You have so many genres and sub genres. And as a person who just loves music as an art form, it's, it's, a blessing and a curse um you know from a from a listener's side it's such a blessing because i can pursue all the random little you know niche interests that i get in music mm -hmm. um just by having a spotify account but as a music maker it's the it's the flip side of that because it's so much harder to get paid and to um generate money from just making music because streaming is is i mean pennies yeah. on the dollar of what album sales is so the money for us is really in playing live. It's in, you know, promoting our shows, getting people out there, um, selling tickets, all those kind of things. Right. It's the reverse. In the old days, it was you you toured solely to sell your album. Mm -hmm. um, the touring was just a, a way to to get people to hear your new stuff and go yeah. out and buy your record. Nowadays, that's you only make money from touring or shows yep. and merch. Um mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, because that 0 0.003 of a cent for every stream is not going to get you too far. Yeah, yeah. But it, I mean, I hate to say though, like, it's the it's the exposure, but <laughs> I mean, the, there is that. It does help. Yeah, you're 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 not wrong. It's it is definitely what what you lose in revenue, you gain in accessibility. Mm -hmm. And right. that's there's definitely something to be said to that.
One hundred percent. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I found a lot of people on on Spotify and just the internet that I would have never become privy to. You mm-hmm. know, because you're just not going to think to search out, but so many options. And when it's just yeah. presented to you, you have a better chance of stumbling upon something. Going, oh, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So with the single coming out the 24th, um, how, how are you guys doing that? Is there a way that people can pre-save the single or what's your most active, uh, you know, social media accounts or that kind of thing? What's the best way to keep, yeah, track, so keep track of you guys? On our Instagram and our bio, we do have a pre-save link Okay, and we're active on every platform. We got Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, Facebook everything it's all in the in the link in our bios cool like is there any new ground you feel you've covered on bullying that you haven't covered before or what are some new ground areas that you're wanting to push into like oh i'm anxious to try this that we haven't done before yeah so bully is going to be our first uh song with this new sound that we have and it incorporates a lot of new things we've got synth in there we've got smaller hidden tracks in there uh like other effects and ambience uh just really cool stuff that it's not present in our older music but it's going to be uh in our new music coming coming uh soon yeah well cool um well i want to thank you guys and like i said i'll put the uh the link in the video I'll make sure everybody gets a chance to, to check it out and, and like i said you've got some great stuff be sure to if you're watching this check out your uh youtube channel you've got a lot of your previous videos on there mm-hmm. good stuff and uh and of course, check out, be on the lookout for the new single Bully coming out the 24th of this month. And uh, I want to thank you again for your new discovery for me within the last, you know, few weeks. So I was pleased to find you. You guys got some some good sounds and thank you. good chops. And yeah, it's good stuff. And it's yeah, cool to work with, uh, with Trevor. I was wondering what he was, I know he's done some other things and I keep mm-hmm. up from time to time, but um, that's, a, that's a good uh, collaboration to have. Yeah. On both your ends. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's been such a blessing to work with them. Yeah, well, cool. All right, well, um, we will talk to you soon. I'll be looking forward to uh, how it comes out and you guys come back anytime and we'll talk your new stuff and what's going on with you. Yeah, thank you so much. And if anybody's watching um, who lives in Orange County, anywhere close to here, February 25th at the House of Blues, that's going to be a really fun show. Great, yes. very cool. All right, well, cool. I appreciate it. All right, thank we'll you. talk to you soon. Thank you so much for having us. All right.